Hello everyone and welcome to my review for Kengen Omega Chapter 103. Before I get into this week's review, I of course have to mention my subscriber goal for 2021, hitting 5,000 by the end of the year. So if you already watch my videos and you're a fan of them and you're not subscribed, you might as well and help me reach that milestone. The other thing is my Patreon. If you want to help support me and the channel directly, there's a link to that down in the description below. If you join the $5 tier, you'll get access to solo leveling and omniscient reader reviews. But if you join either of the tiers, you'll get a shout out at the end of the videos. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the review. We're here this week with the real genuine chapter 103, not 102.5 like we got last week. I still have no idea why they did that. I Maybe that magazine has like a page limit thing or something, I don't know. Um, but anyway, we're finally here, and there are two really important things to talk about this chapter. The first of which is Kiryu and Ryuki. This, like, Setsuna came back like two months ago, and we haven't seen anything of him since then. This and Ryan fighting Edward. Uh, at this rate, I guess we're going to see that after this fight? I don't know. Uh, but as we had figured, Kiryu is talking to Ryuki, um, and there aren't translations out at this point, but I did see something about Kiryu talking to Ryuki about Resolve, um, and based on the facial expressions, I have a feeling that Ryuki is not telling him anything good. Uh, yeah, so... We weren't really sure what direction Ryuki's character would be going in uh, after round five. Like, all of the emotional conflict that he has within himself over whether or not he should kill people, whether he should kill members of the Worms, whether or not he should listen to Koga, who says you shouldn't murder people. Um, and I get the impression from this little short conversation here that Kiryu is pushing Ryuki down the path of, yes, definitely murder people for the sake of those that you care about. Uh, so, yeah, we're gonna have to see where that goes. Um, this is what we've been waiting for a while to see. I don't know how much further it's going to go. Uh, I have a feeling the next time we see Ryuki, he's going to be coming back to the rest of the Kangen team. I think Kiryu is probably going to leave. I think he may go somewhere else now. I don't know where, but... This is probably the last we're going to be seeing of this conversation between the two of them. Uh, anyway, we get angry Lalong, uh, conversation amongst the purgatory fighters. Uh, we get some discussion amongst the remaining Kengen fighters, since now the score is tied 4-4. They need to figure out who they're going to send out next. We've got some little cartoon versions of the fighters. Um, which has already been compiled into a very, very convenient chart for doing little line connections between who you think is going to fight who. I'll probably fill that out and do a community post later today. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, they're all discussing who's going to go next, and then the next Purgatory Fighter comes out. And it's who I had a feeling would come out when the last round started. Well, not when the last round started, but when Jirota came out. And I was like, oh boy, it's time for Purgatory to start doing a winning streak. Um, and the way that Purgatory is going to look good is by having the fighter after Jirota kill their opponent. So they can still lose. Kengen can get the win, but Purgatory still looks good after the fact. Now, Jirota did lose, so... I'm not sure how sound that part of the theory is, but I was right about which fighter's going up, and it's none other than the Grim Reaper of Paris himself, Nicolas LeBanner. Yes, one of the most popular purgatory fighters we haven't seen go up yet. Um, I am personally very excited for this. I like Nicolas a lot. He's very entertaining. I, I, I'm very excited to see um, what his dynamic is going to be here with our Kengen fighter, the executioner Okoye Seishu. That's right, it's a matchup nobody saw coming. Not a single person could have predicted this matchup. Certainly not myself. I certainly haven't been repping this matchup for like months now. Uh, so, yeah, it's here. It's here. Um, so the final page of the chapter is the face-off between the two of them, kind of. With LeBanner being like, hey man, let's have a great time or whatever. Like all very happy and cheery. And Akoya, all shaded dark, big, violent, bloodthirsty aura coming off of him. You know, I'll execute justice. Oh, it's good. It's good shit. So, I've given my prediction for what the outcome of this match is going to be for a while. 
Akoya is going to win through getting killed by Nicholas. Nicholas has been set up basically since his introduction as someone who really wants to kill people. He is envious of the Kengen Association and the fact that unlike Purgatory, killing is still allowed there to some degree. Um, so I definitely think that by the end of this match, Nicholas is going to end up killing Akoya. This is gonna be a fucking bloodbath. We've already seen how violent Akoya can get in fights, um, and I, I feel like it's going to be much the same for Nicholas here. Um, I know a lot of people have predicted that he's going to practice some kind of French martial art I can't remember the name of, but I'm pretty sure I've heard it's kind of like kickboxing, so that should be neat. Um, I feel like if there's any previous Kengen fight that we could probably compare this to, it's going to be Muteba versus Megro because that was two killers fighting each other. This is going to be a very violent match. This is going to be a bloodbath. Um, and uh, needless to say, I'm, <laughs> I'm very excited to see where it goes. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I do think... Nicholas is going to win probably high difficulty. I don't have super high expectations for Nicholas's power. I don't think he's going to be like a top tier fighter, but I think he's going to be pretty good because uh, Akoya himself is pretty good. I'd probably have him at like A tier or something. Nicholas is probably going to end up being around the same level as that. Um, and I, I do think that Nicholas is going to end up being stronger than him. This is going to be seemingly one of the few matches where the Purgatory fighter straight up beats the Kengen fighter. He's gonna lose, but he's gonna beat him through killing him. So Nicholas will end up being the one stronger than Akoya in this situation. So with that, that's all I have to say for this week's review. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Kengen Omega chapter reviews every week. If you enjoy other series such as Record of Ragnarok, Jujutsu Kaisen, Black Clover, and Kaiju Number no. 8, I do videos in those series as well. So if you're interested in those, you should definitely check out my channel. If you enjoy discussing Kangen Omega with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce in this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to that down in the description. Since it's the end of the video, it's time to give a shout out to my wonderful patrons, Archbear, CJ2K, Fuse, Neo, Solo Warrior, Tyree Simmons, Dijon Redden, Anthony Chavez, Honey Mustard, Zach Rowitz, and K-God. Thank you all very much for supporting me on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. And if you too want to get a shout out at the end of videos, you can always go check out my Patreon. I have a link to that down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. Take care.